And actually, this one kind of gets, this one relates to so, Darius's question. So Athena is asking, why would God let Satan loose upon the earth in the end times, knowing the damage he's already caused to humanity? And why would he let him out of the fiery pit after that? Yeah, I love, I love the question, Athena, and I'm sure this confuses a lot of people. Like, why would God do that? What's going on? But it's important to always understand the what's the context? What is going on? And we have to keep in mind first that there's this huge conflict going on between God and Satan. Satan wants to take over. Satan wants to be in control. He's challenging God's authority. He's accusing God of being bad, God of being unfair. And now we're, we're in this huge conflict where we have a choice of which side do we want to be on. And if you're in God's position, how are you going to put an end to this rebellion? What is the best way to go about making sure rebellion will never, ever happen again and that everybody will trust God and trust his, his kingdom, his laws, and, and, and believe that God is who God says he is? So if you're God, how would you go about that? That's really the, the thrust of this question. So, uh, so let's uh, start looking at these verses, though, that we have in Revelation that Athena is referring to. It starts in Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 1. And it reads, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And did you catch that? It says he must be released for a little while. So he must, that, that must is the Greek word die, actually, die, um, that, uh, meaning that this thing is necessary. So it's necessary. There's a reason. God has to let Satan out. So why? These keep going. Revelation 20, verse, uh, verse 7, it says, Now then, the thousand years have expired. Satan will be released from prison and will go out to deceive the nations that are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. So God lets Satan out, and then Satan now goes to deceive the nations. That's what he does. I mean, Jesus says he's a liar, um, uh, the source of all lies. I mean, it, so this is what Satan does. Lies, lies, lies. And now he's deceiving everybody. The whole, the whole world. So uh, Basically, everybody who is not in the remnant that's um, you know, God's special people, you're, n you're now out to get deceived by Satan. And he rallies everybody um, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. So Satan is not just, you know, getting everybody on his side. He's getting them on his side to wage war against God. So we're talking about, yeah, so when is, when is it okay to fight? God's not picking a fight here. Satan is taking the battle to God. Uh, he takes everybody. And in verse 9, it says, They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. So, uh, Revelation isn't in chronological order. Actually, at this time, the heavenly city is now landed in on earth, and Satan and all the wicked people surround the holy city. To rage war. I mean, they completely encompass it in. It's now a sieged city. Can you believe that? And it's now at this point when, I mean, maybe Satan will like dig up nuclear weapons and they're preparing them, what, ready to launch them at the holy city. But who knows what, right? He would do anything. It says, and it's now at this point that fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So God doesn't strike first, God is striking defensively. And think about what's going on here now. It's so clear what's going to happen if God doesn't end and the way, put an end to sin. Sin will try to destroy all that is good. It's almost an act of necessity now to destroy wickedness. All life 
re- basically hinges on God bringing an end to sin. And so now with this in mind, let's look at some verses. 2 Peter 3, verses 7 to 10. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Ah, oh, a thousand years. Where, where, does, where do we hear this again? Ah, maybe he's talking about the millennium. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. God doesn't want anybody to die. He doesn't want anybody destroyed. He's waiting the most he can to give people a chance. But all that, but all should come to repentance. That's what God really wants. So, like, if there was any doubt ever, God is giving everybody one last shot, in a sense. But everybody's hearts at this point are, are already set. It, it's, it's not going to change anything. But God's letting things play out so that we see what's going to happen. So, verse 10, we see, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt away with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So the wicked are destroyed, all the wickedness on this planet are destroyed, and we will get a blank slate. And and just so important to remember that it's written, do not do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. James 4 4. Like, do you really believe that? Like, if you don't, if you don't understand why, this is why God needs to let things play out. Uh, check out, um, I recommend you check out Isaiah 45, verses 16 to 25. And it's talking about uh, Satan and his, um, uh, actually, no, not that one. But uh, it's God talking about, again, his patience and what's going on. It says, um, uh, let's look at Nahum. Nahum says, uh, Nahum, start at verse uh, 3. It says, the Lord, Nahum 1 verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind, and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Was there ever more a day in trouble than that? When, and when God could be a stronghold, when his people are all surrounded, the holy city completely surrounded by Satan and every single wicked human being who's ever lived, and all the, the, the wicked angels too, all surrounding the holy city, God is that stronghold in that day of trouble, and any day of trouble for us. And he knows those who trust in him. He does. They will be in the holy city. But with an overflowing flood, he will make an utter end of its place. And darkness will pursue his enemies. What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. See, this is God's goal. He doesn't want there to ever be sin or rebellion ever again. He has to let things play out so we all completely understand where it goes and why God is so wise and right. Verse 10, for while tangled like thorns and while drunken like drunkards, they will be devoured like stubble fully dried. God's going to not leave anything. Isaiah 14, starting at verse 12. How you are fallen, O heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. This is a verse I thought I was reading earlier. So this verse, uh, this whole area is talking about Lucifer. We go on to verse 19, it says, You are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trodden underfoot. I think this is referencing how Satan, you know, what we read back in Revelation 20, is, is, is chained to the earth. He's not going anywhere, but everybody else right now is dead. He's, he's there by himself, and maybe with his, his fellow demons. It says, and prepare, prepare for slaughter for his children, verse 21, because of the iniquity of the fathers, 
lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the city, the world with cities. So God says, I got to wipe out Satan and wipe out all of his people and all of his followers. Everybody chooses to be on his side because if I don't, they're going to take over. They'll take over the earth, maybe the universe, and they will just fill it with sin and wickedness. And I can't have that. And so this is why, why these things have to come and pass, come to pass. This is what's going on. And I hope that makes sense. And, and great. Athena says, thank you. Makes total sense for me. Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. And uh, Joy says, Revelation chapters are fantastic. And James' teachings, too, are fantastic. Yeah. I love all the books. <laughs> but James and Revelations are definitely at the top. Oh, I'm saving Revelations. I always laugh at people who say Revelations, and I'm doing it now. <laughs> yeah. And we have another comment as well. It says, God is capable of doing practically whatever he wants but has great mercy for us. And I guess part of it is part, part of it is kind of an illusion due to Satan. Yeah, I think that's a good comment. And Joy, uh, Joy Christy, I'm curious, like you said revelations, was that a typo? Because I know a lot of people refer to that. I'm like, where does that come from? Revelations, whereas I'm used to calling it like the revelation of Jesus Christ. A uh, chapters. Uh, maybe Revelation that's it. Chapters. I'm really curious. <laughs> I, you know, I had a friend that used to say revelations too. And I was like, I just thought it was adorable, but <laughs> I mean, I know, that makes sense. I mean, cause it was multiple things that he saw as a, as a revelation. So I know it's, you know, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ we see in chapter one, but I think, you know, that's so cool. It must be a group or, or church, a denomination where that's come yeah. about. I'm, I'm, or a culture or a culture. Yeah. Translation or something. 